Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Schilling from Sequoia Health bringing you this week's Wednesday Wellness Minutes. This is a revival from last week when our audio didn't work, so therefore you get the benefit of seeing it this week. This week we're going to talk about eliminating hip pain and knee pain, pretty much any pain that you feel in your lower extremity from the low back down. Why is this important? A lot of people come in this clinic with low back pain or knee pain or hip pain, and it's usually a symptom of something else. So we're going to go over a couple points here so you can help eliminate that and share this with your friends and family so that your parents and grandparents are no longer going to be afflicted with this. This was inspired by one of our patients who came in recently and described their difficulty getting up and down from a seated position, and we're going to show you how to eliminate that. First and foremost, when you're having any pain from the low back to the hip to the knee, is check the feet. And why is that important? Because your feet are your foundation. And any time you have weak feet, you're going to have weak kinetic chain or the rest of the chain going up the body. Just think about your feet as your foundation. If your arches are collapsing, your knees are going to come in, which is going to destabilize your hips and your low back. Therefore, a couple things you can do in order to strengthen your feet are, if you have really knotty arches, you can use golf balls. You can use some happy feet, which I'll go over in a minute. Make sure you're getting good quality sleep, adequate nutrition, and some B vitamins or some type of adaptogenic herb that's going to help boost your adrenals because your feet are directly dependent on your adrenals. Your adrenal gland sits in your low back here above your kidney. Therefore, if your kidneys are weak due to inclement weather, really cold weather and things like that, you're going to want to, as we say in Chinese medicine, tonify those to make those stronger, to make the feet stronger. I'll show you a little bit about how happy feet work, and this works for stability. Everyone this day and age walks around on a concrete floor, tile floor, hardwood floor, something flat. Our brains are unaccustomed to being on an unlevel surface. If we all lived on the beach, it would be fantastic because we could curl our feet around the sand, have an uneven surface and that like that. In the absence of that, we have what are called happy feet. We just set those on the ground, make sure they're properly inflated, and your job is to become unstable. Okay? The, the whole point of this is to create an environment that is no longer flat and no longer keeping your brain sedated. While these are for under the feet, they're actually for connecting your brain with your feet. As you can see, without paying attention to what you're doing, they're kind of hard to stay on. But you can bounce up and down. You can do a little bit of a shuffle, and then you can fall on your face. For those of you who are uninitiated to these balls, definitely use something to lean on, like a wall of some sort. The Happy Feet come with a booklet, which has a whole set of exercises, which can help you with your posture. And speaking of posture, let's go into our next component of this, which is how to get up and down from a seated position without hurting yourself. A lot of people, when they're having distress in their low back or in their lower extremities, tend to, as they sit down, they try to balance and bring their knees together and then ease themselves into that position. Absolutely the worst thing you could possibly do for yourself. As I mentioned before, as soon as your knees come in, it destabilizes everything in this whole region. Therefore, what do you want to do? When you're about to sit down, you have your feet about shoulder width apart. Make sure your knees are pushing out as you sit down. Nice and slow, so your butt touches the surface and then you settle in. Okay? As you stand up, again, make sure you're pushing your knees out rather than having them come in. Out is key. That stabilizes your glutes, your quads, and your core. And as you come up, you want to push up through the heels. And if you want to think about squeezing your butt together, that's the most important thing because that engages the glutes, which are some of the most important hip flexors and extensors in the body. From the side, feet shoulder width apart, bending down, knees going out. It's nice and slow. There we have it. Easy peasy. So keep that in mind. That's how you want to avoid, or you can use that technique to avoid any pain in your hip, in the knee, in the ankles, and things like that. Just to recap, make sure you have strong feet. That requires, of course, strong kidneys, but in the absence of weakness in the kidneys, you want to have B vitamins, good sleep, and good nutrition to help strengthen the feet. If you have knotty arches, use golf balls. Break them up. Five minutes a day, that's it, per foot. That's all you need. You don't need to sit there and stand on them and roll them around for half an hour. Five minutes is plenty. Then once you graduate from the golf balls, when your feet aren't so naughty, then you go to the happy feet. And then you're training your brain on how to engage your body, how to engage your core, and live on an unstable surface because we all walk around on that flat surface again. Then you get to the point where you want to practice on your sitting down without pain, feet and shoulders apart, spreading your knees apart as you go down. Pretty simple. Most people do not practice this, though. Watch your parents, grandparents. Most of them will sit down. They'll be like, Ugh, and they fall into the chair. Don't do that. Make sure they stand with their feet, shoulders apart, spread them apart. If they need to hold on to something, that's fine. As slow as you can go. The slower you go, the more muscle fibers you'll fire in the quads and in the glutes, the stronger you'll get. 
So anyone wanting to get strong at this and they're retired, do about 50 of these a day. Got nothing else to do? Watch TV? It's 50 squats a day. That's all you have to do. Then you can get to the point where if stairs are a problem, you can find something a little shorter than this, and you can practice going up as slow as you can go and down. And then if you want to graduate to one-legged squats, then you can practice your squats down, come back up. There's a hundred different things you can do. These are some simple steps you can do to strengthen your lower body and get yourself stronger so you can avoid injury. If you are injured, certainly seek help. We're happy to help out with that. If you have an issue with getting up and down from a seated position or taking stairs, it's probably an easy fix. Let us know. We're happy to help. Feel free, again, to share this with your friends and family. Give us a thumbs up, a like, whatever you have to do. Let us know you've been watching and taking part in this. And make sure you comment below so we know that this is relevant for you and useful for you and your family members. We don't want to be putting out information that's unuseful for anyone. Our job is to help people on their paths to get healthy, get well, and things like that. So let us know if we're doing a good job, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week for the Wednesday Wellness Minutes.